I said I was not gonna cry in this video. Oh my god, I cry every year, you guys. Hey guys, Swalaleko, welcome back to my channel. You probably thought you would never see me again. <laughs> I'm the worst YouTuber in the world, but I'm coming back this year. I am all about my content creation. I'm really trying to pump out content for you guys. I want to be more involved with my social communities that I've started. And yeah, this is definitely the year of seeing my face because I'm going to be posting all the time. I swear to God, you guys are going to get sick of me by the end of this. Um, wait, should I take off my glasses? I feel like I look better without my glasses. I wear glasses because I'm blind uh, and I'm getting worse. Most loyal girls are on here and the ones that really, really care about me and like to get updates about me. And I was even myself watching a story time YouTube the other day and I was like, I miss YouTube. I miss doing my dishes and watching a 20 minute video and TikTok just doesn't do that for you. So I want to come back on YouTube. Definitely give me more ideas. I'm thinking of doing vlogs. I'm thinking um, like hauls, Ramadan's coming up, so I'm definitely gonna show you guys my recipes, how I eat healthy. You guys maybe have noticed something, my dramatic weight loss. <laughs> so I've lost like 35 pounds, alhamdulillah, and I can do a video just on that if you guys want. But definitely I have changed in so many ways over the last few months, and I just can't wait to share it with you guys. My mindsets, the way I eat, the way I communicate with people, everything has had an overhaul and I've never, never been better. Okay, I hope you guys can see it. Like, I feel like, do you guys see the happiness? Because I'm feeling really good. I know this is going to be a wonderful year. Ramadan is here. I've never been so excited for Ramadan. Last year was my travel. Like I went around the world and back. Alhamdulillah, I went to Hargeisa, I went to Hamad, I went to Dubai, I went to Fiji, Mexico. Like I was everywhere and it was a great year of travel for me and discovery. Here I'm a little bit more grounded, but still I have some travel plans for later in the year. So I'm gonna vlog it for you guys. So let's start off with weight loss. So Alhamdulillah, I've lost 35 pounds in the last, God, it's been since August. So August, about seven months, Alhamdulillah. I've been pretty steady. I don't really wanna lose any more weight, which is why I'm way more flexible with my diet. Maybe a little bit too flexible, so I'm trying to <laughs> rein it in. And I feel like Ramadan is a great time to like restart some of the bad habits that I've started picking up again. I'm gonna do a dedicated video just about the way I eat, what I eat in a day, things like that. But just to give you guys an overview, I cut sugar out of my diet. I was a sugar fiend. I had a doctor once who told me that I was addicted to sugar. And I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> um, so I wasn't really listening. But it's true, I was so addicted to sugar. You could see it in my skin. You could see it like seeping out of my pores and I am the number one advocate for looking into how much sugar you're supposed to have. I'll put in here how much sugar you're supposed to have and then I'll put here what a typical person or what I was eating in a day and let you guys see those numbers. I have my Diet Pepsi. I cut out sugar, I eat way more clean, I do moderate to low carbs and I will definitely do like a what I eat in a day because it's hard to explain sitting down but when I show you guys my recipes, the things that I eat, it will make more sense the way that I eat. I only started working out in the last few months and I've had recently a setback where I hurt my toe. I'm always hurting myself you guys. I hurt my finger too when I was in head case and I broke it. So yeah, I hurt my toe, but I'm doing better now, so I'm gonna go back in. I love Pilates, I love yoga, I like to do classes. I'm the type of person I lack motivation when it's just me working out, so I love doing classes. I love walking. For the first three months, that's all I did, was just after I dropped my daughter off to school, I would try to take the long way home, and then it slowly I went from taking the long way home to doing a 30 minute walk, and then from 30 minutes to doing 40 minutes, 50 minutes. And now I do like an hour and a half easily. I walk everywhere. I love walking. I feel like it's the easiest form of exercise and it's one of the best forms of exercise. And you don't need to spend a dollar to do it. You just need some comfy shoes and a good podcast and you can walk, walk, walk. All right, so the weight loss is out of the way. So we can talk about my personal life, how I've been doing. Alhamdulillah, it has been almost, God, five years four or five years. It's crazy. I feel like you've really healed when you lose track of time. 
um, there was a time when I knew like to the moment of when I got divorced and now I'm thinking back like oh god what year was it um, so about four to five years since I've been by myself it's uh, something that gets easier with time I feel like being on your own doing it on your own it's like a muscle that you build and the longer you do it the stronger that muscle becomes so I feel like I'm so far removed from the person that was so stressed out and so worried a few years ago about where life was going to take me things are going great alhamdulillah as far as like alina she's thriving she's doing well luckily she was really young when we got divorced so i feel like it didn't impact her like it does some other kids who like really remember their parents together it definitely is sad sometimes when she notices um like at school events and things like that we both go to her school events but like she'll notice obviously that people come with their parents together so that's pretty much the only thing i feel like she's really at peace with where we're at and she doesn't like you know it's just her normal so yeah we're doing great me and her i feel like if i were even to get married ever again inshallah i do want to get married again i feel like i will always look back on this time when it was i said i was not gonna cry in this video oh my god i cry every year you guys oh my god i'm a very emotional person so <laughs> okay i want to say this and i don't want to cry but i will always look back if there's ever a time where it's not just the two of us i will always look back at this time with such fondness guys i've composed myself uh, so i'll always look back on this single mom era with such fondness even though it was really hard especially in the beginning i will always look back and just be like wow like that was a good time for me and alina and just feeling like we can conquer the world together and i will never look back and think it was horrible as i thought it would be and i say this because i know overwhelmingly overwhelmingly on youtube when i post these kind of videos i get messages from so many women who are in the beginning stages of either a separation a divorce or whatever it is and they have children and they're so stressed out and they're so worried and i think that they find it comforting to see somebody kind of on the other side of it and i do feel like i've reached like the best part that i could be at with it in the sense that i feel really at peace i like the independence and there's a lot of like good sides and bad sides but I'm really choosing to focus on the good sides. Um, the fact that I'm able, able to do this video right now in a quiet house because my daughter, she's at her dad's house. And so there's benefits to everything. I feel like um, I don't know any other mom that gets weekends off. So I get every weekend off. Um, so yeah, if you have that kind of support, definitely take advantage. I got a question from a girl recently and it was something along the lines of, sis, how do I battle the feeling of wanting to keep my children to myself post-divorce and not wanting to share the time with their dad and i think a lot of girls struggle with that because it's so difficult in the beginning when you're used to seeing your kids every single day and then now you have to think about co-parenting and sharing their time and not seeing them for a couple days and it's hard it's definitely hard i look at it kind of like i like the time off i've never been the type that's like keeps alina away from her dad because it's only helping me like of course i want the time off i want to chill come pick up your daughter sounds great like i <laughs> it doesn't bother me um but i can see where you're coming from or where she was coming from in that in the sense that like when you're losing control of a lot of parts of your life you kind of just want to hold on to control in some aspects and i feel like a lot of people kind of fixate on controlling the children aspect but if you think about it realistically and logically, you know, it's nice to have help. It's nice to be able to share love of having children with somebody else. Um, I'm lucky in the sense that I have like an easier co-parenting relationship. And I know some people deal with like really not so great co-parents. Um, but from my perspective, it is much easier when you share and like kind of relinquish and share that control so i have so much time to like create content hang out with friends do things that i want to do and it's like me time and i'm so happy i do miss her but i'm so happy to have this time as well that brings me into what else i wanted to talk about 
I am on a little fertility journey. If you guys follow me on TikTok, I posted a little bit about that. Um, it started off with my friend. She got her eggs frozen or she froze her eggs. Um, and it got me thinking about that and like, what does that mean? And she did a bunch of tests. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm 33 and I watched an episode of Girlfriends. Um, do you guys watch Girlfriends? So there's an episode of Girlfriends where Joan is thinking about getting back with her ex Brock who doesn't want kids and her um, her doctor is telling her like, hey, I remember you told me when it's time to have this chat to talk about fertility and talk about, you know, planning for kids. And I remember at the time I thought she was so old in that scene and I feel like she was like 31 or 32. And she was like super worried about fertility. So I was like, you know what, Asim, why don't you go check it out? So I live in Ontario, Canada, so we can do um, pretty much most fertility testing is covered. The only thing that I paid for, which was the AMH test, in the idea that I might freeze my eggs or I don't know I just wanted to know where I was at yeah so originally I just went in just to get an idea of my fertility and like where I was at so I did a bunch of testing if you watch my TikToks I go more into depth about the experience and the process but it was it was okay it was a little bit uncomfortable um, I ended up doing AMH, FSH, LH, progesterone, um, estradiol, uh, I did an ultrasound which was an uh, follicle count where they count how many follicles you have in each ovary and I got the results back uh, my AMH was low and then the other tests were fine I forget what it's called but it's about your ovarian reserve so it's basically how much ovaries no you only have two ovaries it's how many eggs you have left <laughs> I keep making this mistake you only have two ovaries or most people have two ovaries and so all my other tests were okay just the amh that was low and i was freaking out about it and i was like oh my god i'm infertile but alhamdulillah i have spoke to so many beautiful girls who have given me advice and have told me that this does not mean what i think it means and it's definitely um nothing to be too stressed about so yeah i don't know if i want to freeze my eggs yet i think i'm going to take the ramadan just to think about it uh, if you guys have any experience with this process let me know uh, I think I would prefer to get married and then do ovarian, not ovarian, embryo freezing because I heard it has better results instead of just doing egg freezing. But Allahu alam, I will come to that road when I need to. For now, I've done an appointment. I have an appointment in a couple months to retest my AMH and then see what the numbers are looking like then. I've gotten a few comments on TikTok about you know, not everything is for the internet. Stop talking about this on the internet. And I'm like, what is embarrassing about what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? I'm a private person and I have a lot of things that I don't talk about on the internet. And I have my own boundaries as far as, you know, what I expose. But the, I don't think talking about fertility and talking about concerns about fertility as a woman in her 30s is anything to be embarrassed about. And I feel like my natural instinct is of course always to be private when it comes to my life and i'm sure those of you who followed me for years know that i'm pretty private but wallahi something really told me to share this process and i felt the urge to share this process because i feel like i have a responsibility as somebody that is choosing to be you know a content creator talk about the things that some people might be you know a little bit shy to talk about because without representation there's so many girls out there who are suffering in silence, if that makes sense. So if I talk about subjects, especially online, everything's for a reason. It's not just for me to talk. It's because I feel like these things, divorce, uh, fertility issues, aging, these are all like stigma stuff that I feel like is a responsibility for me to share, to show people who are also in the same boat as me that it's normal and it's okay. And for us to work through it and for us to be community. Cause I got so many messages from my fertility videos from girls on TikTok um, telling me like, Abaya, don't worry, well, I'll don't worry. There's so many, like this happened to me, this happened to me. I've gotten girls who are worried in the same boat as me, wondering, am I infertile? Um, and so that's why I share these things. It's not just because I like exposing my business on the internet. And I hope those people understand why I'm doing it. Cause I don't like seeing those kind of comments because that is not me. I'm not someone that just exposes my life for no reason, you know, it's for a reason. I feel like that's it for a life update. 
Um, I'm definitely be creating a lot more content for Ramadan, inshallah. So stay tuned for videos. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any specific videos that you guys want me to make. I definitely want to create a lot more content for Ramadan, inshallah. So let me know what you guys want to see this month. I hope you guys are healthy and safe. And I will see you guys in the next video, inshallah. Love you guys. Bye.